there are many types of customers that you could serve, right? But there are some types of customers or clients that are a better fit for your business. Maybe you get along better with certain types of people or other types of people or at certain stages of their life, they get better results with your solution, right? So it's very important and helpful to come to an understanding of who that person is or who those types of people are. So in this short video, I'm gonna give you an exercise to create what's called a client avatar. This is also called a buyer persona or customer profile. Basically, it's a representation in your mind and also written down of who your ideal client is. And the reason why it's important to do this is because once you get clear about this, once you write it down, you will be able to get to know them better, you'll be able to serve them better, and what's interesting is that you'll start to more naturally and more easily notice them as you talk, as you do your marketing, as you get to do your networking, you'll actually, strangely, you'll attract more of them to you. And it's, it's as some people say it's because, you know, there's energetic frequencies that you're attracting to you because of your clarity. But, but you could also say that because you're clear, your brain, your, your powers of observation naturally can pick out in a crowd or as you're contacting people online, you can naturally pick out, oh yeah, this is the type of ideal client that I serve. And, and the people who are not ideal clients will kind of fade into the background. Um, some people call this the reticular activation system. Just like if you're clear that you would like to have a red car, then you go out and walk on the streets, you'll just start noticing more red cars very naturally without much more effort than being clear in your mind that you're looking for a red car. That's called your brain's reticular activation system. So same thing, when you get clear on who your client avatar is, you will be able to more naturally spot them in all of your business networking in your marketing and you'll be able to you'll have the motivation to get to know them better and serve them better and you'll just have an easier time marketing your services and your business okay so here's an exercise if you already have served some clients okay I'm going to give you two versions one is if you already have clients and the other version is if you don't have clients yet so if you already have some clients then write down the names of 20, if you can, 20 of your clients, all right? Now, once you've written them down, you may wanna pause the video and do this, and then unpause it when you're ready. Now, once you have the names of 20 clients, look down this list and, and just kind of connect with each of them in your heart and in your mind. And then circle or star the ones that you get along the best with and that get the best results from your services or your products. Okay, go ahead and do that. And just circle, circle the ones that get the best that you most enjoy serving. Now, choose just three to five of these ideal clients. Choose three to five of these ideal clients. All right, and then I want you to answer a series of questions. Now, before we get to the questions, let me tell you the other version. If you don't have any clients yet, the way that you can do this is by looking at your existing friends and colleagues, you know, classmates, family members, people that you know, okay? And among the people you know, who would be the ideal types, type of person that you'd love to serve in your business that you think <clears throat> will get the best results from your services or your products? write down the, the, the names of these three to five ideal types of clients. Go ahead and do that now. All right, now whether you've written down the names of three to five of your existing or previous clients that are ideal for you or people you know that would might be your ideal clients, let us now answer a series of questions that will help you clarify who these people are, okay? Now, the first question is what are their demographic characteristics. What do I mean by this is the things that you can observe 
so that you can say, for example, do they tend to be men or women? Okay, what is their age range? They're probably, you know, and put put an average or put the most common age range down. Okay, it's almost certainly true that your business doesn't serve teenagers as well as it serves, you know, people in their 80s. They, 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 right? I mean, because people who are teenagers and people who are in their 80s, I'm just using an extreme example here, they, have, they are going through such different things in their life and they communicate in such different ways, they think in such different ways, that they're not going to use your services or products as they're not gonna benefit in the same way, okay? They're, and if you're telling me that they benefit in the same way, you don't have enough experience serving these types of people to really see, oh my gosh, yes, some these people really benefit a lot more than these people. So sometimes you just need more experience serving people with your solution, with your service or your product before you really get to know who, who's more ideal. But let's just say you've written down these names. What age range are they? Are, there in the, are, there, are they in their 30s or in their 40s or in their 50s, for example? Every age range are going through different things. They communicate in different ways. They think in different ways, okay? Um, is it a particular race? Maybe, maybe you tend to attract or serve better people of a particular race. Uh, is it a particular profession, okay? Um, maybe they have certain types of jobs and you tend to serve people with certain type of job better than others. I don't know. Maybe you don't, okay? So I'm not saying that there's necessarily a certain demographic characteristic, but there's almost some demographic characteristic that is true for your ideal client, okay? Uh, so, you, so, so just look at these, and if it's true that, wow, my ideal client versus my non-ideal clients are really different in terms of age range, or really different in terms of profession, then let write that down. Maybe you've noticed a certain education level among your ideal clients versus your non-ideal clients. Write that down. Relationship status, is it true that your ideal clients are in a relationship or not in a relationship? Okay, so write that down. Do they have children? Maybe your ideal clients have children versus your non-ideal clients have children or don't have children. Write that down. Or other aspects that can be measured, basically. Okay, those are your demographic characteristics. The next, um, you know, the, the next tip I have for you is that you don't have to write down the things that don't really distinguish your ideal versus non-ideal. For example, it doesn't matter, my ideal clients uh, versus non-ideal clients may drive the same type of car. So the type of car they drive might not matter. My ideal clients versus non-ideal clients may both love the same type of movie. So then I won't write that down because it doesn't, dis doesn't distinguish between the ideal. We're trying to distinguish here the characteristics between your ideal versus non-ideal. Make sense? Okay, another um, type of question is what stage in their journey of transformation is different between your ideal clients versus your non-ideal clients, okay? Uh, what specific fears or insecurities does your ideal client have that your non-ideal client doesn't have, okay? Uh, what specific hopes and dreams does your ideal client tend to have versus your non-ideal client? What specific passions does your ideal client have versus your non-ideal client? Again, only write these things down if you can see a distinguishing feature, okay? Um, what, are, what is your ideal client struggling with that are, is motivating them to seek out a solution like yours? Again, you might wanna pause this video along the way and write down the answers and then unpause it when you're ready. Okay. Um, very important question, how would your ideal client research the solution to help them with their struggle or to find someone like you? How do they research it? Do they go on the web and type in certain things? Do they ask their friends? Do they, are they reading certain blogs that are recommending solutions to them? Are they subscribed to certain newsletters? Do they listen to certain podcasts and, and seek out solutions as a result? Do they go to certain conferences? Now, you may need to ask them. So if you have current or previous clients, ask them how do they research to find someone like you. Or, or if you have certain friends or colleagues who are like your ideal clients, ask them, okay? How do your ideal clients consume content? 
What kinds of blogs do they, literally which blogs do they read if they read blogs? Which email newsletters do they read, okay, if they read such things? Which um, magazines do they read? Basically, you want to find out how you can reach them. If they read certain blogs, then you can create a relationship with these blogs to do promotional partnerships. I've talked about promotional partnerships in, in other videos. Um, what social media platforms do they use? Do they tend to use Facebook more? Or do they tend to use LinkedIn more? Or Twitter more? Okay, Find out. <clears throat> or maybe they're, they're younger and they use Snapchat or Instagram. Find out. And then if you find that, wow, most of your ideal clients tend to use a certain social media platform, well, it probably makes sense for you to learn and get to use, get to know how to use that social media platform well. Okay, um, geographic. Do you notice that your ideal clients tend to be in a certain geographic location? Now, maybe you live in a rural area and you need to reach out online and then, that, then this geographic doesn't matter, okay? Um, so what other patterns are you noticing that distinguish your ideal clients versus your non-ideal clients? Very important general question to answer, okay? Um, finally, give this ideal client representative a name. Now, if it's only one person that's perfect for you, that, that does represent your ideal clients, then it's, if it's an actual real person, then you can use their name. But sometimes it's a, an amalgam, a, a combination of several people, then you give that person a name, okay? Just give them a name. Um, and then find a picture that represents, that looks like them. You could use the picture of one of your actual clients. Again, this is not being shared online publicly. This is for your own private records. Um, but find a picture and if you need to find pictures of stock photos of people, just go to images.google.com and type in, you know, 45 year old male, for example, or uh, 55 year old, you know, white woman. Um, and you can find pictures, whatever age range you're looking for, whatever gender you're looking for. You can find it on Google Images and you're only using it yourself so you don't have to ask for permission to use it. You're just using it privately for your own imagination. All right, so um, remember, remember the reticular activation system. Once you get clear on, these, on who this person is, you will find yourself seeing them more often and, and having more motivation to get to know them and serve them better and your marketing and your business just becomes easier. Okay, so do this exercise, or some people call this a law of attraction. I, I actually really do believe that the law of attraction works in some strange ways when it comes to human relationships and business relationships. So get clear on this and let this benefit your business and make your marketing easier. And as always, I'm open to your comments and your questions.